Hey, Scott or Stan, I want to talk about OA. This is part of the Heinz 57 catch-up series uh, that we're doing, uh, where there's two videos that will continue on. Um, definitely check them both out. The very first one I got up here uh, is going to be about what is OA? What is the Order of the Arrow about? Uh, not many people know. So get filled in on some of that information uh, right now. Hey, Scatter Stan here. I want to talk a little bit about, to the leaders, about the OA, also known as the Order of the Arrow. Now, the Order of the Arrow is the, um, it is the National Honor Society for Scouts and Scouters uh, within Scouts BSA. Uh, this is a critical group. It was founded uh, a long time ago by um, um, E. Erna Goodman and Carol Et Edson, Edson, I think is the two founders, uh, back in 1915. So it was a very, uh, it's, it's a very established and old tradition in scouting. The founding of it was based on brotherhood, cheerfulness, and service. Big three things um, that are in the order of the arrow. Uh, this is not a secret society. A lot of adult leaders and parents are confused about that. Uh, as they like to put it, Discreteness helps enhance the experience. So something to think about. If a parent or a leader is curious about the order of the arrow and they're not a member and they're not becoming a member, it would be totally okay for them to be told what's going on at a given ceremony or the, the ordeal process or any of that stuff. There are no secret societies in scouting. There isn't. Um, when you go through youth protection, you know that to be true. Uh, there are no secrets. Uh, so, And this is true for parents. For youth and even adults who are going through an election, uh, depending on where you are in the country, usually there's an election once a year with all scout troops and um, I believe they're doing uh, venture crews. So that's the two things. Uh, they do an election. Once they do that election, uh, the elected candidates go through an ordeal. Uh, the ordeal um, is where it's optional, okay? <laughs> you, if you're elected, you do not have to join, okay? But if you're elected, there are so many people wanting to get into the order there I'd never get elected. Uh, it is optional, okay? You can say, no, I'm, I'm not ready, okay? A youth can say that. Um, that's fine. There's criteria for the election, but once elected, it's up to the person who's elected to go through the ordeal. Once they've done the ordeal, that starts their membership. After a period of time, they would go through uh, an additional ceremony uh, where they go through brotherhood and uh, then they seal their membership. Uh, once you're elected and once you go through your ordeal, once you do brotherhood, you're in for life as long as you're a registered scouter and you've paid your dues to your lodge. Okay, And there's different lodges throughout the country. Um, I wear a Tippesaw lodge flap. Okay, now this, this comes into another thing. I have had leaders tell me that they don't like the Order of the Arrow. Um, first of all, I, I, I have to, I, every time I hear that, I have to sit there and think, what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that. That's, cr what? You don't want the Order of the Arrow? You don't like the Order of the Arrow? Well, Usually they're not in the order of the arrow, so they have not a clue what's going on. I try to educate them on what the order of the arrow is about. 
Um, that it's a it's a marvelous situation. Uh, the, it's a youth-led organization, just like the troops and crews. The youth run the program. Adults are there to mentor and to facilitate. And of course, they're not voting members on any of the elections, of course. But they're there to help the youth do the program they want. So that's one of the big things. It's These are the older youth involved in this organization. Now, granted, there are some that do a lot of activities. And scoutmasters might think that, oh, you're just taking all my, my senior patrol leader away. No. We're giving your senior patrol leader an opportunity to stay longer and more involved in scouting and therefore be there to help lead your troop. Okay? As you get older, doing knots and sharpening knives and doing all the scout skills gets a little repetitive for the older boys. The OA gives them an opportunity for more leadership that's more focused even on your own unit something to consider. Uh, the OA is the national program, um, so that's general uh, gist of the OA. Do not be afraid. There's going to be a youth calling uh, unit leaders, uh, scoutmasters and crew, uh, you know, that they're going to be calling them to arrange an election and uh, they will go over the criteria and the process. Uh, but that's done every year. Uh, there's a call out, then of course, then they go through the ordeal, and then of course, uh, a time later, they they go through their brotherhood. But that's the OA. Uh, if you're an OA brother, and, oh by the way, we you know everybody in the order or the, of the era, the OA, is referred to as a brother. It doesn't it regardless of gender. Okay, it doesn't matter. Everyone's a brother. Okay, so get used to it. That's the terminology they use, okay? It's just like scouts and, and crew members and so on. I mean, there, there's different terminology we use. But in the OA, everybody's a brother. Uh, and, you know, it, there's different honors that come later. I mean, that's something that happens. Uh, but the OA, that's really it in a nutshell. Do not be afraid of it. Uh, embrace it. It will actually help retain your older scouts longer uh, within the program. Okay. Scouter Stan here. It's official. You've been called out and you are now been asked to go away from the campfire and go with a bunch of others that have been called out quietly as you go off. Um, the OA has called you out. Now, in some places, this is different. And a lot of people don't know these differences. So let me clarify some of it. Uh, first of all, a call out can be done usually at a district or a camporee. Okay? Uh, can also be done at council camporees. Uh, that being said, it is a solemn place where people are at a campfire. Uh, usually at the end, near the end of a campfire, they will start calling out names. Um, people in regalia will come out and gather the scouts and scouters that have been elected to go through their ordeal in the membership process of becoming an OA member. So. What's going to happen is, is that once they're taken away from the fire, they're given a small piece of paper, it's a little packet. Um, this little thing is called um, SOA, which stands for the Spirit of the Arrow. And the Spirit of the Arrow, uh, they, it'll give them more information about that process so that they're not totally confused. Hang on to that little booklet. You'll be getting more later on during the ordeal. Okay, And even during your brotherhood, which is the final part of becoming uh, a full-blown member, a brotherhood member of, of the order. Um, where you're going is you're usually going off like a cracker barrel. You're going to, you know, the, the local group that was there to receive you 
has given you this thing to read and they give you the information to start off with. Now, the, I mentioned earlier it's different in different places. A call out that's done here in, in the south is usually done in the winter. Uh, if you go back, check the little link, uh, if you go back to the winter uh, episode, it's like summer here, okay? So uh, for the rest of the north, it's, it's, it's nice. You can camp out and not freeze, you know, that kind of thing. The thing is, is they call it a call out. And it's a calling out of the names of the people who have been elected. And that's what the call out is. Uh, up north, in some councils and districts, they do it differently. They do it at summer camp. Now, the neat thing about that, they often, it's not called a call out, it's called a tap out, okay? And a tap out is, is more of a ceremony where uh, the youth is taken before the chief, the symbolic chief, and uh, they tap on his shoulders, okay? Um, it's, you've seen it at summer camps. Uh, I went through a tap out. Uh, I, was, I went through my ordeal up north. Um, like I said in another, another episode, check it out up there. Uh, in that episode, uh, I talked about um, my life in scouting. I was up north. I was in Wisconsin, okay, and we did a tap out, and it was done during the summer. Um, I couldn't make it to that summer camp. I was actually committed to a different camp uh, at the time. So when I got back home, they had a supplemental tap out. Okay, that's what I went through. And if you do that at the summer camp, the ordeal starts the next day. That night, they don't go back to camp. Okay, they actually start off on the ordeal. They do it at summer camp. So that, that being the case, it's a, it's a super honor, really, to go through the ordeal that way. Ordeal uh, in um, warmer climates, um, whether it be Texas, all the way across the south, south, southern states, uh, we typically do a call out. And uh, later, at another camp out, a specific ordeal, uh, they'll do it then. It's the same ordeal, whether you do it right away through a tap out up north, or if you do a call out in the south. So, depending on where you are, will depend on what you, what type you're going to go through. Um, I believe that they're going to call outs uh, nationwide. So that might be the system that they're going to, but we'll see, okay? But it, it varies from area to area. Um, uh, one of the neat things about it is, is that this is the beginning of your um, ordeal. It's the beginning of your membership process uh, into the Order of the Brotherhood. Um, and on that subject, uh, regardless of gender, everybody in the order is referred to as a brother, okay? It's a brotherhood, okay? So brothers, regardless of gender, it is a brotherhood. Um, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's going to be a great thing. Once you go through your ordeal and you go through all that and there's a nice ceremony and stuff, I don't want to spoil anything, okay? Uh, one of the things is we got to preserve those things uh, so that it's special, okay? Just because we don't really talk about it a whole lot, um, that makes it even more special. Makes you curious, doesn't it? And Scoutmasters, you're going to have quite the experience and really enjoy uh, your ordeal. You're going to remember it for a long time and uh, remember your group that you were in and all that stuff. So that being the case, uh, this is just the beginning. Don't worry. Don't, don't be concerned. It's okay if you can't make your chapter or your lodges or deal. Um, you need to get it done within a year's time of call out or tap out. You need to get it done. Otherwise, you've got to go through the election again. So go ahead and get it done when you can. So if you have commitments, I know adult leaders have this come up all the time. Uh, you can do your or ordeal with another uh, lodge. You could do it with another chapter, okay? So they have different schedules and stuff like that. So look into it. 
uh, if your schedule is interrupting the time that you should go to it, you know, you have to do something else, totally fine. Uh, it is optional. Because you got called out, because you were elected, doesn't mean you have to go in. There are lots of people who do not get called out, who do not get elected. So it's an honor, okay? This is an honor society, but it's optional, okay? That's, that's one of the things. Um, it is optional. Um, so keep that all in mind. Uh, remember to hang on to the, uh, the little brochure things, you know, these things that they give you. These things are wonderful. They will definitely put you in the right mood for the whole process. One of the big things with Callout is that that is the beginning of your membership. Sadly, many people who go through the ordeal, uh, we don't see them again. But yet, they wear the flap, uh, they wear the sash, you know, they do all the stuff that you see out there. Um, but we don't see them again. One of the big reasons, I feel, is communications. Communication. We don't tell them that the OA is not just ordeal after ordeal after ordeal. Once you go through ordeal, that's once. That's your ordeal. That's it. You never go through it again. That's the wonderful thing about it. You get to go through um, all the different events that the OA has. Did you know that they have a thing that's almost like a, it is as big as a jamboree? but it's called NOAC. Uh, it's the uh, conference that they have every two or three, I, I think it's every four years now. But they, that's available to OA members. So this is huge, okay? This is a big deal. So you want to continue your membership. Once you've gone through ordeal, you never have to do it again. And then you go through your brotherhood training and that finishes your membership. After that, you get a brand new sash. It's got the little bars on it. It's, it's super cool, okay? So don't disappear. Uh, we often call those the flappers, okay? They have a flap. We haven't seen them in anything, but they have, a, they have an OA flap. Um, that's, you know, that's okay. I, I mean, the, granted, they might have an issue, okay? They might have aged out. They may be going off to college. They may, they may have other reasons. Sadly, a lot of them don't have a reason not to come back. Uh, so we call them flappers. We also call them sash and dash. Uh, but you don't have to do that. Um, there was a big gap between my ordeal and my brotherhood. A huge gap. There was 10 years of flying all over the country and all over the world. <laughs> so it was a career going on. <laughs> so there's a big gap. But I still did it, and I went through Brotherhood and uh, finished my membership. Wow. I'll tell you what, there's a lot involved with the OA, and it's very special. Uh, brothers, Order the Arrow Brothers, should be subscribers to this channel. Go ahead and hit the button. It's all over the place, all over the channel. It's even in the video. So go ahead. I give you my permission, you may be a member of our community. Go right ahead, uh, make sure you ring that little the, the bell thing, because that will help notify you when new videos come out. Uh, even if I'm on vacation. <laughs> and also, um, don't forget to comment or ask questions. I do answer them. Ask anyone who's asked the question. You'll see how fast I do answer them. So please give it a try. Now that you're a brother and you've gone through the ordeal, um, what's the next step? Huh? Got to understand. Ordeal was an ordeal. Um, that's our subject today. Now that you're an ordeal member of the Order of the Arrow, uh, BSAs, uh, Scouting BSAs, National Honor Society, uh, this gives you um, the ability to wear the flap, uh, to wear that nice brand new white and red sash, 
Um, that's that's good, but that's not the only thing that the OA is about. The Order of the Arrow is a is is like I said, it's an honor society of scouts, um, and being an ordeal member is really just the first part of the membership process. Eventually, you need to finish or complete or seal your membership by going through Brotherhood. Now, once you've done our deal, you never have to do it again. And that's not what the OA is all about. Uh, we're not into the ordeal thing. It is a big part because it's important to get new members and going through that process. Uh, there's a lot to that. And if you've gone through that, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, that's one of those things that that a lot of scouts and scouters do is that they'll go through that and they think oh it's all about ordeal it's not they have a lot of fun things that they do so that's something to consider when you're thinking about the order of the arrow now I did, I've had leaders tell me as a as a commissioner um, tell me that the OA does nothing but take their older boys away from their troop. Nothing could be farther from the truth. If anything, it helps the older boys. It gives them an opportunity to do more, to take on more leadership roles, and stay more involved in scouting. If it wasn't for the Order of the Arrow, you may not have the older boys. Because going over and over the scout skills... Uh, for rank advancement up to first class can be very tedious for older boys. So that keep keeping all that in in perspective uh, is very important when you're dealing with the order of the arrow. It is the older scouts, the more experienced scouts, the ones that have been to summer camps, the ones that have rank advancement. Those are the ones that are in the order of the arrow, and it's a more advanced leadership uh, organization or honor society. That's, that's the whole purpose. Now, keep in mind you want to avoid being a, what they call sash and dash. They, they get that ordeal sash on, you never see them again. Or, or a flapper, somebody who has a flap on their shirt, and they've never been to any of the OA events. They don't go to the meetings, they don't go to the, any of the conclaves or the fellowships or anything. They just disappear. Don't be like that. Get involved. Get Actually, make yourself the promise that you're going to do at least four things a year with the Order of the Arrow. And you can't stay away after that. Because these are just, they have a great time. Now, these are the older uh, scouts, and they have a lot more <laughs> activities and fun and uh, competitions and lots of fellowship things and they do a lot of really cool stuff too now one of the cool things that they do in the order of the arrow is that they can actually become more involved in your troop there is an actual OA rep position within the scout troop um, that's something that a an assistant scoutmaster should take on to assist uh, there's even a patch uh, for the assistant scoutmaster that takes on just the OA roles and helps directly with that. Now when that OA person is um, providing the troop with information, say they're called to the front of the, of the troop meeting and asked to talk about OA stuff, they are representing the OA. At that point they can, they can wear this. The sash is worn when only representing uh, the order of the arrow. Most of the time you wouldn't be wearing it because you're not at an OA event or you're not representing them. If you are in a troop and you're representing them, you wear it. If you are in a troop and they're not specifically talking about something with the order of the arrow, you don't wear it. So it's something, a sash that you put on so that people recognize that you are a member of that organization and that you have information that for other people who are part of that organization will listen and, and be a part of that. 
So you only wear it when you're actually talking uh, about the OA. And then the rest of the time, you don't. Okay? Very simple. So keep that in mind when wearing the sash. You only wear it when you are representing the OA. Elections or you're talking about it as a representative, those are the only times you really wear the, and of course, when you go to an OA event, then you would be expected to wear it. So that's the only time. The book that you were given, now there's different books. This is one that was given out, I believe in 2009. Okay, I don't know if it's still current. They probably changed the cover. The information's about the same. So definitely go through that book and start reading up on Brotherhood. Now, Brotherhood is where they add the stripes to the sash. You get a brand new sash. So a dirty sash is a happy sash. So that being said, get involved. Start doing stuff with the OA. Uh, avoid becoming a sash and dash. Okay, The sash normally, if you are not representing the OA at a given event, okay, either as an OA representative or uh, an election uh, of, of types. If you're not involved directly with that, you wouldn't be wearing the sash. So when only when you're representing the OA should you wear the sash or at an OA event. The rest of the time, just leave it at home or put it inside one of your cargo pockets. Totally fine. There's a lot in the OA that you can do. The Order of the Arrow has these national conventions. They call them NOAC and they're huge look into it. All brothers, regardless of level, are welcome to attend NOAC. Totally cool. Uh, make sure that you get involved with your round table. The round table has a lot of, a lot of times, councils, districts. The district will actually have opportunities at round table for OA to participate, whether it be a flag ceremony or something of that nature. A lot of times, because the adult leaders are there at round table, the youth also have their meeting at that time. Hey, wow, that was helpful. I'll tell you what, there's more. Once you're a brother, there's a lot of activities you can get involved in, like we talked about. I'll tell you what, and I know that you're going to take it to heart, and I know that I will see you on the trail.